Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today I have a filament review for you. Yes, so a couple weeks ago, um, the lovely people over at Rigid Inc. reached out to me and asked if I would like to review some of their new PLA Plus uh, filament. And I haven't ever done a filament review, um, so I figured, sure, why not? I would give it a go and just see what my experience with this new filament was. But basically what I tried to do in this video was to do some uh, different experiments to see if I could find um, some differences in this filament compared to some other filaments that I have. Um, it should be noted that these tests are not scientific. You know, if you watch my channel, you know that I mostly do designs um, and I'm not so much about the tech and scientific aspects of 3D printing. So um, keep that in mind and I'm just gonna talk overall about my experience. We're gonna do a couple of things to see how it compares to PLA and PETG and then we'll round it up at the end. So before we get started, um, I would like to point out that, as I said before, the people at Rigid Inc. did send me this filament, but they did not pay me in any way, and everything you will see here is my own opinion. But if you would like to check out this filament, uh, there's a link down in the description that will take you right to it. And then with that said, let's get started. Okay, well normally I don't really care what the packaging is, but um, I have to give them props on this. This is actually pretty nice. So first of all, they've got this really nice bag with uh, graphics all over it. And then this is what's inside. First of all, we've got a little insert here that comes with it that tells you how to get in touch with them if you experience any problems, which I thought was really nice. And then on the back, it tells you like temperatures and stuff that you'll need to know to print with the filament. And something that I thought was a really nice touch, they threw in some Haribo um, Coca-Cola gummy bears, in which I, I'm not really a fan of these, but my wife absolutely loves these. So that was really nice, make the wife happy as well. And then they sent me these two um, bags of filament here. Now these are both PLA Plus, you can see right on the top, um, right there. They sent me black and blue. So here is the filament that they sent me. This is their new PLA Plus. These are the sizes they have. You can get a full spool or just a little sample 10 meter one. Um, and they got lots of colors, um, some really nice colors here. I particularly like this red, um, but the ones they sent me are black and blue. Now their claims for this are biodegradable, um, just like normal PLAs, I believe, easy to print with, um, the strength of ABS, and then it lists the printing temperatures. And now I'm going to be using three different types of filament for these tests, um, the first being just some normal PLA, the second being some normal PETG, and then the third being this PLA+. Plus. So um, I'm going to open up Simplify 3D and show you the settings that I used for all three um, of these filaments. Okay, so here we are in Simplify 3D, um, and I'll show you the models that I printed shortly, but they were all printed at the uh, with the same settings. Literally the only thing that I changed on all of them was the extruder temperature, so I even left the bed temperature the same. It was a 0.3 millimeter layer height on all of the prints and an infill percentage of 15. I printed them out on the same printer, which is my Robo 3D R1, um, so I tried to make everything as consistent as possible. I left the bed temperature at 70 degrees because that's what I print normal PLA with. I believe that the PLA Plus said that you don't even need a, a heated bed, but I've never had luck um, printing even normal PLA without a heated bed, so 70 degrees is my go-to, um, and I believe PETG was a similar story. So and then the extruder was the only thing that changed. So for my normal PLA, I used 210 degrees Celsius as the temperature. And then for the Rigid Ink PLA Plus, I used um, 230, which was smack in the middle of their temperature ranges. And then for the PETG, I went with 240, which was Hatchbox's um, recommended temperature. Okay, so let's actually get in and see what my results were. So I basically printed in three filaments. The white filament that you see is Hatchbox PLA that I got off of Amazon. This is just normal PLA. The dark blue filament is Hatchbox PETG that I got off of Amazon as well. And then this black is the new PLA Plus from Rigid Ink. Okay, so let's actually get into the testing a bit. First, let's talk about these slimes. Now, I printed these because um, these slimes actually have a little bit too much of an overhang along the bottom. So as you can see down here, there's a little bit of a ring around the bottom and there's a little bit of an indentation. So this was the normal Hatchbox PLA. And this was PETG. And actually the PETG didn't hardly suffer from this at all. There was just a little bit, so noticeably less than the normal PLA. And then the PLA Plus suffered from the same problem. 
as you can see on the side over here. So I would rate that at exactly the same as the normal PLA. And then I also printed these to see um, the layer quality. The layer lines are pretty much not visible on each of these. And these are printed at 0.3 millimeter layer height. So, so really no difference in quality. Then I printed out these chess pieces that I created. Um, I'll put a link up in the corner over here so you can check out that video if you'd like to. But the reason that I chose these pieces um, is because there's a pretty significant bridge right in there. So I figured this would be a good test to see how each of these filaments bridge. And the results are pretty much the same. You can see right there that all of them suffered from just about the same amount of droopage. And um, even the little crosses on top drooped in the exact same places on all of the prints. So, so no noticeable difference there, which I was not expecting. So my next test with these was about the heat resistance. And now obviously the, um, the PLA Plus prints at a higher temperature than normal PLA. So logic would tell you that it can withstand a little more heat. But I will show you the clip real quick of what I did to these. You always hear warnings, um, especially with PLA, that you shouldn't leave it out in the sun on a hot day or in the car exposed to sun because it will get hot and it can kind of deform. But I've never seen that in person, so I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot. And uh, today's the perfect day to do it because I think it's the hottest day so far here and it is hot as balls outside. So I'm going to take these chess pieces and stick them out in the sun for a few hours and we'll see what, what happens to them. Ah, so hot. Okay, so I'll leave them there for a little bit and then we will check back. Okay, and these are actually the pieces that I left outside. Now, I left these outside in direct sunlight on, on top of concrete um, for six plus hours on a day that was um, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And it doesn't get much hotter around here. It was, uh, I think, the hottest day this year so far. And uh, to my complete surprise, literally nothing happened. They all look exactly the same. There was no deformation whatsoever. So then um, the final tests were with these carabiners. And I did actually download these files from Thingiverse, so I'll put a link down in the description to which one I used. But I basically printed these, one to test warping and two to test um, the actual uh, strength of them. So let's see, this is the normal PLA and uh, no warping, just like you'd expect. This is the PLA Plus, again, no warping, so um, their claim to print like PLA has held true. And then this was the PETG, and as you can see, there actually was a little bit of warping there. And I applied a fresh coat of spray paint before each of these prints, so once again, held true, um, very easy to print. So now let's actually test the strength. So let's start with normal PLA as our control. And first, I'm going to bend it in and just see where it breaks. You can hear it cracking a little bit at about that point. Keep going. up. Oh, there we go. Break right down there. I got to about there before it broke. So next, let's try the PETG and see how far that one can bend in. Okay, that's about the point that the PLA broke, so that's a good sign. Oh, I can bend it all the way. It does look like it bent the carabiner just a little bit because it doesn't doesn't go all the way closed. Let's try that with the PLA Plus. Okay, I'm going to start bending it in. Okay, very resistant. It does not have as much give. Like I'm having to put quite a bit more pressure on it to get to that point. So it seems to be quite a bit tougher to move at least. So we'll keep going, keep going. A little bit of cracking, but ultimately kind of came back. Um, like the PETG, it was bent just a little bit down here, um, but ultimately pretty much retains its shape. All right, so let's go for broke. I'm going to move this to the outside and bend it out this way to see how far it has to bend. All right, it's cracking pretty good right now. There we go. So maybe an inch away from the other side of it here. Now let's test out the PLA Plus. So I'll move it. Again, this one is a lot harder to move. So maybe that's what they're meaning when they talk about the uh, the strength of it. Because uh, it, it is a lot harder to flex, the, the rigidity of it. So let's see. Okay. 
Oh, it's still holding. It's cracking a little bit there. There we go. Launched a piece off somewhere, I don't know. But I had that out quite a bit further. So I'd say that was really the only test that actually showed any difference. And this one, by far, was the hardest to flex and seemed to um, flex the most without breaking. So that was actually good to see that um, that claim seems to be true. And like I said, these are not very scientific testings. Um, just kind of experimenting a little bit. So take everything you see here with a grain of salt. And then I wanted to print one more thing. They sent me this lovely blue filament, um, and this was PLA Plus as well. And I have a project coming up that I'm going to be making Baby Dory from the new Finding Dory movie. And um, so I figured blue, Dory's blue, works out perfect. Um, but unfortunately, the um, print failed, as you can see up here. And that was due to um, me not having a good solution for printing samples. Because as you can see, they sent um, sample spools and um, never really printed with those before and don't really have a good solution so I just kind of hung them on my thing and they ended up getting tangled and the print failed and I didn't think I had enough filament left to finish off this print. So as you can see the um, print quality is really good on the parts that I actually printed um, and it all looks pretty good. The roughness underneath is due to some support materials that I was using um, and then there was one final thing that I kind of wanted to test out and that was sanding because I have heard people say that ABS is um, easier to sand or better to sand um, versus PLA when you are going to be painting it and like making props out of it. Um, and like I said, I've never used ABS so I don't know if that's true or not, but I figured I would just try this because I've sanded a fair bit of PLA. Um, so I thought I would sand this a bit and file it and see if I could get some of the roughness from the support material out of it. Um, and I would say it's pretty much on par with PLA. I didn't notice any differences. So it's pretty smooth to the touch, um, just like normal PLA is. So I don't know how helpful that is. I just figured I'd mention it for what it's worth. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, as far as my thoughts on this, uh, I have had a very positive experience with this. Like I said, the few issues that I did have with the prints were just due to it not being on an actual spool and me not having a solution for um, using sampled filament like that so that's nothing that they did wrong that was all on me so i definitely recommend that you guys check out some of this filament um, if you're in the market for looking for something that's a little bit tougher than pla but prints easier than abs um, and especially if you live in the uk this is a uk based company so buying local is always great all right guys well that's all for me remember that the link is down in the description if you'd like to check it out don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Um, let me know if you guys have found any good solutions for um, creating some sort of spool for sample filaments like this because uh, I was having a heck of a time printing with them and I pretty much needed to uh, supervise it the whole time. So um, if you guys have good solutions, uh, leave them down there. I'd love to hear it. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time.